Hello and thanks for joining us. This week we continue our examination into child poverty and welfare reforms and we explore how the government has been challenged to intervene in the economy. Official government figures show exports have fallen 8% compared to this time last year. Opposition politicians are blaming the high value of the New Zealand dollar. But is it more complex than that? What solutions are there to kickstart New Zealand's export market and return the country to surplus? And is a financial transaction tax a consideration? These are some of the questions we put to Labor's finance spokesperson, David Parker. Uh, David Parker, welcome to the programme. Thank you, good morning. Yeah. Uh, why is it that exports have dropped 8% over the last year? There's a range of factors, but one of them is that our exchange rate is elevated below the fund, uh, above the fundamentals of our economies. And when the exchange rate goes up, the exporters find it harder to sell their products overseas in other currencies. And as a consequence, their businesses suffer and they lay off workers. Is it as simple as that, though? Because uh, obviously we're in the midst of a global financial crisis that's sustaining the negative impacts on countries all over the world. Well, it is partly that. I, that's why I didn't say it's only the exchange rate, but the exchange rate's definitely a large part of it. The International Monetary Fund a couple of months ago uh, estimated that New Zealand's currency is 15% overvalued. And if you mm. think about some of the, the workers who've been laid off at, the, you know, at Nuplex in Auckland recently or further south in the pulp and paper mills or the aluminium smelters doing it hard, it effectively means that in real terms overseas they're paying 15% more for their wages and 15% more in their other costs like electricity than would be the case if our currency were 15% lower. Mm. And that's the difference between profit and loss uh, and their ability to be able to sell products overseas often. So overseas obviously the commodity prices, the raw commodity prices have, have been falling as well and we've seen the impact of that on some of the, uh, you know, the coal producers and the, and the government getting yeah. into a difficult situation. Um, is all of this linked to, in the sense, like from the point of view, has New Zealand relied too much on export of raw commodity offshore? Well there's a bit of that um, uh, and that is another problem of New Zealand but I don't, I don't see that as an excuse to have an overvalued currency and in fact given that our prices for our exports are dropping it's somewhat counterintuitive that at the same time our exchange rate's been going up. You know if the prices of your products internationally are going down and your current account deficit's getting worse then your currents, currency should in normal circumstances be going down. You know, the, the, we face competitive devaluation abroad. Other countries are devaluing their currencies or holding them mm. low uh, in order to, uh, to help their exporters. And that's true of so many countries in the world now, whether it's China, biggest trade surplus in the history of the world, and yet they hold their currency low. We've got the Americans, the Europeans, Great Britain, all printing money to keep their yes. currency low. Which, which obviously causes, some would say, an, an unnatural kind of position for those currencies. How would New Zealand kind of adjust to that? Well, we, we, we ignore it at our perils, the answer, mm. and we see what happens when we do ignore it. You know, there was a six-hour period on Monday this week, or last week, uh, where 600 job uh, losses were announced in mm. six hours, and most of those are in export-related industries, and the likes of the chief executive of Nuplex Industries an Auckland-based uh, uh, manufacturer said that a major part of it was their currency being held at high levels and he predicted that what was going to happen as a consequence is companies like his would be shutting down in New Zealand and then doing the same thing or a competitor of theirs doing the same thing in an overseas uh, jurisdiction which had a more competitive currency. Now you mentioned that uh, New Zealand dollar is valued at around about 15% above where it should be in, 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 in dollars and cents terms where would that ideal level be in your mind? Well, well, I, I actually don't say what is an ideal level. All I say is that the, it should reflect the fundamentals of the New Zealand economy. The 15% figure I used was an estimate of the International Monetary Fund, not my own. Uh, you know, Do you the, agree the, with that, though? I agree it's overvalued beyond its fundamentals. So does the Reserve Bank. What would Bank. be the proportion of overvalued in your mind? Well, the IMF estimate is 15%. Since mm. it's got, then it's gone up um, uh, uh, even more. Whether it's 15% or a slightly different number doesn't really matter. It's substantially overvalued. You know, for me, one of the long-term measures of whether your currency is appropriately valued or not is whether you're covering the cost of your imports and interest from the exports that you sell to the rest mm. of the world. Because if you don't, the balance sheet of your country goes backwards and you get poorer. Well, New Zealand hasn't had a current account surplus for 30 years now, and it's under our current settings, it's projected to get worse. So we have to look at some of these things that are holding back 
our exporters, and that if we do, that will flow into more export-related jobs and a wealthier nation. You, you mentioned that about ignoring overseas um, uh, intervention at our peril. That, that mm. kind of indicates, I guess, to the average New Zealander that you would be in favour of intervention. Um, what, what, what's your situ situation there? Is well, what we've said is that one of the fundamental problems is that under New Zealand, by law, the Reserve Bank, who is in charge of monetary policy, has to give primacy to targeting inflation. Mm. And so if they do that, and they give primacy to that, they're effectively being forced to give less attention to other aspects that are important to economic management, and, namely and the exchange rate. So and for, for the viewers, um, what we see there is a manipulation of the, um, the OCR, or the official cash rate, yes, and, and it has an ongoing effect on, on mortgage on in, interest rates. On interest rates, that's their yes. primary tool. And what we're saying in the Labour Party is that it's time to move on from giving primacy to inflation targeting over other aspects of economic management, like well, attention to your exchange and, and why is it time now to move on, considering we've had that particular regime in place uh, for some time, policy that, that, regime? That's a good question. It's partly because of what's happening overseas, but it's also partly uh, because it started to run out of rope. It's not working. You know, uh, every decade or two, the world changes course in monetary policy. If you go back to the time before World War II and the time of the Great Depression, we had the gold standard. That proved to have problems, uh, and that was overturned at Bretton Woods, and we had exchange mm. rate uh, uh, um, focused policy for a couple of decades thereafter. Then that stopped working properly and we moved on to monetary policy that attempted to control these things including inflation by controlling the supply of money. That stopped working and we moved on to inflation targeting. Inflation mm. targeting has now got more ill effects on other parts of the economy than it has benefits. So what kind a, of ill effects? Well, like the exchange rate. You know, If you focus, if you give primacy to one area of economic management is at, at, at the detriment of the factors. And so what we're saying is not, not ignore inflation. We're not saying that at all. Mm. We're saying that it's time to stop giving inflation targeting primacy over other aspects like the exchange rate. Mm. And if you were looking at the Reserve Bank as a, as a body that would actually roll out um, a means of uh, addressing the overvalued New Zealand dollar, how would you as a government create policy that would encourage that or intervene in that? Well, the, the most important things to do is to change their objective. Uh, at the moment, they get off the hook, effectively, from having any responsibility for the exchange rate because it's already always subservient to inflation targeting. So if the, the exchange rate goes ridiculously high, as it is at the moment, and it's causing job losses and people to be suffering in their wages as well, uh, and therefore people having to go to Australia, etc. Mm. although Australia's got similar problems in this regard, um, at the moment, they say, oh, well, our primary objective is inflation. That's not our responsibility. And the government then says, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. That we can't do anything. Uh, the Reserve Bank's got responsibility for these things, and so, so everyone's off the hook. So if you picked up the position, you would do something about it. Yeah. What would that be? Well, we would amend the Reserve Bank Act so that mm. uh, inflation targeting does not have primacy over other aspects of uh, economic management. We've said we'd do some other things as well. We changed the membership of the board. We think it's too dominated by the interests of bankers rather than manufacturers and the interests of so people. So who would, who would you replace them with? Well, we would have a more broadly based board which would include senior representatives of the manufacturing exporting sector. Uh, we would have representatives of workers. I mean, people, an economy is meant to work for ordinary people. The control of inflation isn't an end in itself. It's meant to be stable, strong economy. I mean, how would you define your, your intervention there? Is it, you know, some people would think, OK, Muldoon uh, fixing the, the, the New Zealand dollar would be one intervention. Uh, others would say, um, printing money as a way of manipulating yeah. the value. I mean, what would your solutions be to bringing it down? We're, 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 we're not uh, saying they should do either of those two things. Uh, we're saying that the Reserve Bank has the full suite of tools available to it currently, but it does, does not uh, implement them as it would if it had responsibility for exchange rates alongside inflation. Uh, what would they do differently? Well, you know, inflation targeting plainly did not work during the 2000s. Inflation targeting uh, around central banks around the world, mm. including New Zealand, was largely blind to the effects of this enormous asset price bubble, house prices going through the roof, people not being able to afford to buy a house. It in turn fueled this sort of false sense of security and people went mm. out with a checkbook on the back of ever rising house prices, increased their mortgages and mm. spent the money. So uh, infl that was under mm. inflation targeting mm. because inflation targeting focuses on so, uh, it, so with inflation current, excluding asset prices. So, so it's plainly got big flaws. So would you move into having a, a um, currency price cap 
a currency cap? No, we haven't type. said that. No. Uh, but how would you then give a measure, an appraisal kind of well, position? Well, th there, there is balance required in all of these things. Out of whack at the moment because the balance always tilts in favour of inflation targeting over everything else. What would the government? What, what would a reserve bank do differently if it had broader targets? Well, it would use what, what are sometimes called macro prudential tools. Mm -hmm. What that means is something like loan to valuation ratios so that when uh, the housing market gets overheated, they might say instead of requiring a 10% deposit, you have to have a 30% minimum deposit or something like that. Or they might say the term of the loan has to be repaid over a shorter period of years rather than 20 years, say 18 mm -hmm. years. Now those sorts of things tend to take the, the heat out of um, the, um, the property market. That then decreases demand for mm. New Zealand currency. Mm. There's mm. less new money being bought into the country and that takes pressure off the currency. If you were successful at bringing down the currency, what kind of mechanisms would you put in place to minimise the consequential increase in pressures, inflation pressures that we would see perhaps coming in from um, imported energy costs, diesel, petrol, etc, yeah. etc? Cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the accusations that the National Party make. They say, effectively, you'll be poorer if you have a lower exchange rate. What mm. nonsense. You know, New Zealand gets poorer because we don't cover the cost of our imports from our, and, and our interests from our exports. Um, there is an effect if you drop your exchange rate on the likes of the price of petrol. But, of course, you've got more people employed in your society, more money being earned in these export-related jobs, and so you're better able to, make the, to meet those payments. The International Monetary Fund, which is no bunch of left-wing loonies, luminaries like Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel laureate in economics, they say that inflation targeting has passed its date. Mm. In fact, I, I met with some of them recently, you know, that's their book, In the mm. Wake of the Crisis. Mm. They're effectively saying quite Sell clearly... Selwyn Pellet, I think, has been um, Selwyn putting Pellet, it around. The, 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 yeah, employers and manufacturers, uh, mm. uh, and, and Selwyn in particular, uh, are saying, look, it's wrong at the moment. We cannot survive long term on our current trajectory because we're getting poorer as a country. Because every year we have a current account deficit, we have to borrow more money and sell more of our assets overseas in order to bridge the gap. What, what about alternative solutions? Um, I, I take note from a report um, on the currency markets last night coming in on the wire that uh, nine European Union countries, including France and Germany, have indicated that they would want to introduce, want to introduce, a uh, financial transaction tax. Yeah. Uh, many say that that is a, an alternative kind of thing. Is that something that you see has merit? Uh, I think it's merit. it has merit. Uh, it should be considered. Um, whether it's practical or not depends not upon New Zealand in that instance, because if you're going to tax um, uh, financial uh, tra uh, well, speculation in currencies, which is one of the proposals, you have to do that on a worldwide basis, and if New Zealand did that alone, it would just mean that those those transactions took place elsewhere. But it is true that um, countries like Brazil, uh, they control inward flows of capital when they're pumping up asset prices and helping get inflation away, rather than just jacking up interest rates, which is what we've traditionally done in New Zealand. So there are, there are lots of different choices around the world, mm. and many countries around the world that are doing better than New Zealand pursue different courses, and we're saying, it's time to say, look, the current regime is not working. We're losing too many jobs in our export sector. Too many people are without income. The dire effects of unemployment are, are terrible for those who are laid off. And the businesses that are reliant on exporting are going broke too often or not thriving as they ought to. We need to change. And in brief, New Zealand First has put a bill through um, that is positioning to try and actually develop a solution. Is Labour in support of that bill? Yes, we are. We say that it's on the right track. It says that we should broaden the objectives of the Reserve Bank rather than putting primacy of inflation alone, focus on other factors. We'd rather the bill was worded slightly differently and if it gets to select committee, we'll be making those suggestions. Hmm. David Parker, thank you very much. Thank you. David Parker, Labour's finance spokesperson. Coming up, someone who is one of New Zealand's most experienced lawyers in representing women who have been discriminated against by government policy and or officials.